Being able to play chords is super important when playing piano, and if you don't even really know what chords are, you're in the right place, because your piano teacher, Tim, here, has you covered, because today, I'm going to introduce you to chords. So let's get to it. So the first thing I want to describe for you is, well, what is a chord? So probably if you've been learning from the beginning so far, you've probably been playing some melodies all by themselves, which is really just hitting one note at once. Well, chords, mostly played with your left hand, today they're all going to be left hand, is uh, when you play basically two or more notes at the same time. I would say that that's a chord. So all of these are chords, just like that. And chords, what they do is they help support, give harmony and support to what's called the melody, the part of the song. That you know that would be jingle bells so the chords just adds a little bit of extra flavor a little bit of extra sound to what's going on so that is a chord mm, tasty the types of chords we're mostly going to be talking about today are triads and as you can probably surmise a triad is made up of how many notes well a triceratops has three horns a triangle has three points so a triad must have three notes. Let me show you a few that you should be aware of. Now I do have other lessons on the sites on, um, or on the web, well, the YouTube on how to learn these quickly, but today you just need to really know the difference between these four chords. So here we go. So the first chord is going to be, let me play this with the left hand, a major chord. It just sounds bright and happy. The next type of chord you need to know about is a minor chord. It sounds sad. So you have major, happy, minor, sad. One thing that's worth pointing out is the only difference between a major chord and a minor chord is this middle note here. You're just, in the minor chord, you're flatting it. So just know that today, the, the difference between major, happy, minor, sad. And then there's something called a diminished chord which has a tenseness to it, a very uneasiness to it, right? So just know that, that that's probably your diminished. And then there's augmented, which has a kind of a mysterious kind of sound to it. Um, it also sounds tense, but so there's your uh, diminished and there's your augmented. You can even hear that the augmented is further apart. And that's really where the names diminished and augmented come from. Diminished means to make smaller. So the difference between the notes is literally smaller. So you're from major here, then you go to minor, and then diminished, you're actually bringing the notes in closer together. Whereas augmented, to augment means larger. So you're actually increasing the difference between the notes. So just know about those four chords. You don't need to memorize them all today, know where they're all at on the piano, but just know that major sounds what? It sounds happy. Minor sounds what? It sounds minor, sad. Uh, diminished sounds scary or tense. Uh, and remember, they sound closer together. And then augmented, it has more of that mysterious sound. So those are the four main types of triads that you should be aware of. Just a quick note, there are more chords than triads, you know, the three note chords. There's actually a four note chord. I just want you to be aware that this exists. I'll play it with my left hand here because I said that's what we'll do. And um, you would think that this is what called a quad chord or a four chord or a quadra chord. Nope, it is called a seventh chord. Now, why is it called a seventh chord? Well, let me show you. Uh, it's just called a seventh chord because the difference between the bottom note and the top note is seven. And that's really it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's the difference between the bottom and the top. I don't really know why the naming conventions go from triad implying it has three notes. Because you would think to keep the same convention, like if this was a seventh chord, then this would be a fifth chord top note is just five above. I don't really know why they mix them up. They just want to make it as confusing as possible. But just know that a three note chord is a triad and a four note chord 
is not a quad chord, it's a seventh chord. I want to explain this really quick. So if you want to play any type of chord, now we're not going to talk about whether it's major or minor or any of that other stuff we talked about, but say you want to play a G chord. This is by far the easiest way to play the G chord. Step one, find G. So there's G. And all you want to do to play a G chord is just evenly space out some notes. So I play a note, I don't play a note, I play that one, don't play a note, and then play that one. So just every other note there, and that's the G chord of some kind. Say I want to play a D chord of some kind. Play D, skip a note, and then play skip another note, that's a D chord of some kind. Now, it does change depending on where you are on the piano, the majors and the minors. But right now, when you're just being introduced to chords, don't mind that so much. Just know that if you have an evenly stacked chord, whatever note is on the bottom is going to be called the root of that chord. So this is going to be an A chord of some type because A is on the bottom and they're evenly spaced. And now if the chord is not evenly spaced, it might be a little hard to see here, but there's a bigger gap towards the top of the chord then the name of the chord is not on the bottom. So keep in mind that this only applies when the chord is evenly stacked. That's what we call root position. If, it's, um, if there's a bigger gap anywhere in the chord, that implies it's in some kind of inversion. I'm not gonna go over all the inversions today. I'll, I'll try to remember to put um, some links in the description for you so you can learn more about all of these in detail. But just know that if it's evenly stacked, that's what we call root position. If you start, putting gaps in different places, those are called inversions, but they're still the same chord. So say you have an F major chord, which was this one I just played. Well, now we're going to invert it. All you gotta do to invert a chord is you're gonna keep the same three notes, F, A, and C, but you're going to change the order in which they appear. So the really easy way to do that is take your top two notes, keep them exactly where they're at, you take your bottom note, which happens to be F in this case, you just take it out for a second, keeping these two where they're at, you move your F, your root, up an octave from where it was. You have the same three notes as before, you had F, A, C here, but now the orders change, A, C, and F. And inversions and all that stuff is pretty much all in a lesson on its own. Again, I do have lessons on this uh, in the channel. I will try to remember to put them in the description if I forget. Please remind me. So you want to learn more about playing piano right? Well, check out the other lessons in this series right here. I'm going to put this right here just for you. Nobody else click it. It's just you. Anyway, click on that uh, playlist to learn a lot more about playing piano. It's been your piano teacher, Tim, here. Thank you so much for coming by today. And I'll see you, yeah, yes, yes, you. you. In, in the next, next lesson. lesson. Have a great day.